dear students hello and a very warm welcome to all of you in today's session we'll talk about an important member of the kingdom fungi that is agaricus and we'll discuss in detail its important features and life history the genus agaricus is a fungus which is cosmopolitan in its distribution and contains about 300 species these fungi are commonly known as mushrooms. Being saprophytic in their mode of nutrition, the agaricus species are found in places that are rich in dead organic matter. That's why they are found on decaying leaves, logs, manure pastures, woodland litter, meadows, and humus-rich forests during the rainy season. The genus agaricus consists of both edible and poisonous species. Many species of this genus are prized as food because of their edible basidiocarps. The agaricus family includes the best known mushrooms in the world. Most of the larger species of agaricus are edible like agaricus arvensis and agaricus macrospora. And the most edible species are agaricus campestris the field mushroom and agaricus bisporus the cultivated mushroom the white buttons generally sold as mushrooms are a cultivated variety of agaricus bisporus the crimini and portabella mushrooms are also the cultivars of this species the poisonous species of agaricus are agaricus silvicola and agaricus xanthodermus let us first of all know about the systematic position of agaricus. Agaricus belongs to the kingdom Mycota, division Eumycota, subdivision Basidiomycotina, class Hymenomycotina, subclass Holobasidiomycetida, order Agaricales, family Agaricaceae, and genus Agaricus. The species which we have selected for explaining the life cycle of agaricus is the common edible mushroom agaricus campestris also known as field mushroom or guild mushroom. Since the current lecture is about the important features and life history of agaricus we will discuss it under two sections that is structure and reproduction. When we talk about the structure of agaricus it can be divided into two parts. One, vegetative mycelium, and second, the basidiocarp or fruiting body. The vegetative plant body of agaricus consists of a subterranean mycelium. Based on the stage of development and complexity, the mycelium of agaricus is of two types, the primary mycelium and the secondary mycelium. The primary mycelium is the mycelium which is formed from the germination of a basidiospore. Based on the type of the basidiospore from which it is formed, the primary mycelium can be of plus or minus strain. This mycelium is haploid and is made up of less branched hyaline hyphae which are septate and monokaryotic. The primary mycelium is short-lived and soon transformed into the secondary mycelium. The secondary mycelium actually develops from the primary mycelium by a process called as dikaryotization, during which the two primary mycelia of opposite strains, that is plus and minus, fuse together by somatogamy, that is the fusion of two protoplasts, and result in a dikaryotic cell. This dikaryotic cell divides and forms a dikaryotic mycelium which is also called as secondary mycelium. The secondary mycelium is perennial, branched and septate. In addition, the cells of this mycelium are heterokaryotic, binucleate and contain dolipore septa. Thus, the primary mycelium can be easily differentiated from secondary mycelium by being monokaryotic. While as the secondary mycelium is characterized by dikaryotic or binucleate cells. 
During the growth and cell division, the dicarion in agaricus is maintained by a complex type of septum formation known as clamp connections, in which the simultaneous division of the dicarion results in the formation of four haploid nuclei, two of each strain. Out of these four nuclei, one from each strain moves into the daughter cell by the formation of a clamp connection. The function of clamp connections is to ensure that each cell is binucleate and contains one of the each daughter nuclei. This division remains restricted to the terminal cell only. When the dicaryotic cell begins to divide, a pouch-like lateral outgrowth is formed between the two nuclei, for example, A and B. The outgrowth is known as clamp connection. This outgrowth turns backward in the form of a hook. The nucleus B then moves into the clamp pocket. Both the nuclei divide synchronously and we now have four nuclei, that is A, A prime, B and B prime. A septum is then formed at the base of clamp holding the nucleus B within. The nuclei A prime and B prime move towards the tip of hypha while as the nucleus A moves away from the hyphal tip. A septum is then formed below the clamp forming a complete new cell at the hyphal tip with its two nuclei. But the posterior cell and the clamp each contain only one nucleus and therefore the hook or the clamp fuses with the posterior cell allowing the nucleus B to move back into the posterior cell. Now both terminal and subterminal cells become dicaryotic each with a pair of compatible nuclei. The process continues till a dicaryotic mycelium is formed. These dicaryotic mycelial hyphae traverse the soil in all directions and may live for a long time before forming the fruiting bodies. When the conditions are favorable, the secondary mycelial hyphae entangle together forming root-like white hyphal cords known as rhizomorphs. Rhizomorphs then develop into fruiting bodies or basidiocarps that are commonly known as mushrooms. Dear students, let's now look at the structure of a basidiocarp. As I already said that in case of agaricus, the underground rhizomorph gives rise to the aerial fruiting body which is known as sporocarp or basidiocarp. This basidiocarp is the only upper ground part and is commonly known as mushroom. The mature fruiting body or basidiocarp is an umbrella shaped structure distinguishable into two parts, a broad cap called pileus and a long massive stem known as stipe. The pileus or cap occupies the distal end of a stipe. It varies in shape depending upon the species and the stage of growth. It can be convex, conical, flat, ovate or even campanulate that is bell shaped or infundibuliform that is funnel shaped. It's usually 3 to 10 centimeters in diameter. The upper convex surface of the pileus can be smooth or somewhat hairy and white, yellow or light brown in color. The underside of the pileus usually contains about 300 to 600 radially arranged plate-like structures hanging downwards known as gills, which contain terminal club-shaped spore-producing structures called basidia. These gills vary in color and are initially pink, turning dark brown at maturity. They also vary in length. On the other hand, the stipe is cylindrical, fleshy and about 3 to 10 cm in height and 1 to 1.8 cm in diameter. It's usually creamy white or light pink in color. It contains a ring-like structure called annulus towards the upper end below pileus. When we look keenly at the basidiocarp of agaricus, we find that internally the gills are much more complex in structure as compared to the stipe and pileus. They are lined with thousands of basidia intermixed with sterile paraphyses. 
these gills are made up of three layers hymenium subhymenium and trauma the outermost layer of gills is called as hymenium it consists of aseptate club shaped cells arranged in a palisade like layer these cells are fertile and are known as basidia singular of basidia is the basidium these basidia are separated by sterile paraphyses hymenium is followed by a compact layer called subhymenium which usually contains isodiametric two to three nucleate cells the center of a gill is occupied by loosely arranged interwoven hyphae forming a layer called trauma both subhymenium and trauma are sterile and therefore hymenium consisting of fertile units called basidia is the only fertile region of a gill now let's understand how does a basidiocarp develop basidiocarps develop at the tips of the underground hyphae as small white knot like structures these hyphal knots enlarge and grow into rounded or pyriform pinhead structures called as buttons the button or simply the growing basidiocarp at this stage consists of two parts the bulbous basal part and a hemispherical apical region the former develops into the stem or what we called as stipe and the latter forms the cap or pileus some of the hyphae at the junction between the stipe and pileus are pulled apart forming a ring like compartment known as prelamellar chamber on the inner side the prelamellar chamber attains a concave shape and eventually becomes lined with alternating radial plates of fast and slowly dividing cells which form the gill primordia the gill primordia develop into the gill lamellae hanging downward into the prelamellar chamber as the pileus grows in size there is also an expansion of radial interspaces between the developing gills the margin of the pileus is connected with the stipe by a membrane known as velum or inner veil or also called as partial veil which covers and protects the developing gills with the elongation of this type the buttons are elevated above the ground the apical part of the button grows more rapidly as compared to the stem as a result of which the inner veil ruptures expanding the apical hemispherical region out as an open umbrella as the inner veil ruptures it exposes numerous gills present on the underside of the pileus the torn velum or inner veil leaves behind the remnants which remain attached to the stipe in the form of a ring that is known as annulus this annulus may be ephemeral that is short lived or persistent this exposed aerial part consisting of pileus and stipe forms the fruiting body or basidiocarp known as mushroom the appearance of mushrooms is largely dependent on the environmental conditions when the soil is hard and the season is dry the fruiting bodies do not grow beyond the button stage and remain underground while as in rainy season when the soil is moist the buttons grow vigorously and come out of the soil very rapidly and that's why most of the mushrooms are visible on the soil surface during the rainy season so an interesting feature of mushrooms is the formation of fairy rings the dikaryotic mycelium grows outward away from the center in the form of a ring forming a circular colony in the soil on maturity the hyphae sprout into fruiting bodies in a circular fashion in the next season the fruiting bodies develop at the periphery where the nutrients are in abundance that is outside the edges of the space they occupied in the previous season as they move outward the older parts in the center degenerate and leave behind the depleted soil within the circle these rings expand in size every year reaching up to several hundred feet in diameter and 
every year the fruiting bodies appear in larger and larger rings or arcs. These rings are commonly known as fairy rings or fairy circles. Referring to the European folk tales that they mark the places where fairies gather, dance and perform magic rituals. These fairy rings are usually formed in the forest land but are also found in grasslands and turfs. After discussing the structure of agaricus in detail, we now come to the second and last section of today's topic that is the reproduction in agaricus. Reproduction in agaricus occurs by vegetative, asexual and sexual methods. Vegetative reproduction methods are usually prevalent in edible mushrooms. In this process, little pieces of mushroom tissue or the dicaryotic mycelium are used as an inoculum. This inoculum is grown in soil which is rich in organic manure to form the new mycelium and fruiting bodies. When we talk of the asexual reproduction, agaricus does not commonly reproduce by asexual methods. This type of reproduction takes place only by the formation of chlamydospores which develop on the secondary mycelium at terminal or intercalary positions. These spores germinate to produce the dicaryotic mycelium. Sexual reproduction is the most common mode of reproduction in agaricus and is solely involved in completing the life cycle. And for sexual reproduction to happen, a primary requirement is the acquirement of two opposite strains, plus and minus a phenomenon known as heterothalism. The somatic hyphae or primary mycelia of two different strains act as sex organs. The process of sexual reproduction in agaricus occurs in three steps, plasmogamy, karyogamy, and meiosis. Plasmogamy is the fusion of mononucleate protoplasts of the two mating types resulting in the formation of a dicaryotic secondary mycelium. Karyogamy is the fusion of two nuclei to form a diploid zygote. Meiosis is the reduction division of the diploid nucleus of the zygote to form four haploid deciduospores. The last two processes that is karyogamy and meiosis usually occur in a basidium only after the formation of the basidio calf. Let us now discuss these three processes in detail. The sexual reproduction or life cycle of agaricus starts with the germination of basidio spores to form the monokaryotic primary mycelia of two different types that is plus and minus. These primary mycelia undergo plasmogamy. During this step, the primary mycelia come close to each other and at the point of contact, the cell walls dissolve and the protoplast is fused, resulting into a dicaryon. The two nuclei do not fuse immediately, but persist in dicaryotic state for extended periods of time. As a result of successive divisions through clamp connections, the dicaryotic cell develops into a dicaryotic mycelium. These dicaryotic mycelial hyphae traverse the soil in all directions and then develop into fruiting bodies or basidiocarps that are commonly known as mushrooms. As we already discussed in the first section that the pileus of a basidiocarp is made up of gills which contain spore producing club shaped structures called basidia. In a young condition, the basidium is known as protobasidium. Since this protobasidium is dicaryotic, therefore it contains two haploid nuclei of opposite strains, that is plus and minus. Once the basidium matures, the two nuclei fuse with each other to form a diploid zygote. This fusion is called as karyogamy. Karyogamy is immediately followed by meiosis resulting in the formation of four haploid nuclei. Out of these four nuclei, two are of plus strain and two of minus strain. In the meantime, four small peg-like projections or outgrowths are formed at the distal end of each basidium. These tubular outgrowths are called as sterigmata. The tip of 
each sterigma becomes swollen and a vacuole is formed near the base of each basidium. This vacuole enlarges and pushes the protoplasm into the swollen parts of sterigmata. Once the swollen tips of sterigmata attain full size, a nucleus migrates into each of it. Each swelling at the tip of a sterigma is mononucleate and it ultimately matures into an oval pinkish purple basidiospore. Therefore, each basidium gives rise to four haploid uninucleate or mononucleate basidiospores. A small projection is formed at the junction between basidiospore and sterigmata, which is called as Hiller appendix, due to which the basidiospores are placed slightly oblique at the sterigmata. After this, the basidiospores need to be dispersed. So, we will now discuss the dispersal of basidiospores. The spores remain within the basidium until physically dispersed. Once the basidiospores are mature, a liquid droplet known as Hiller droplet appears at the Hiller junction, lifting the basidiospore at its top. This liquid drop actually enlarges up to one-fifth of the size of the spore. This enlargement creates a tension and with this, the spores are shot away from steric matter in a rapid succession. Once the basidiospores are released from the basidiocarp, they fall on the ground. Under favorable environmental conditions, each basidiospore germinates by producing a germ tube. This marks the beginning of a new cycle. The germinating basidiospores eventually develop into a monokaryotic primary mycelium, which can be of plus or minus strain, depending upon the strain of the basidiospore. The primary mycelia with single haploid nuclei soon transform into dikaryotic secondary mycelium by somatogamy, and the process continues. So, we can sum up the stepwise life history of agaricus as the germination of basidiospores into primary mycelia, somatogamy or fusion of the compatible primary mycelia, dikaryotization and formation of a dikaryotic cell, clamp connections and formation of the secondary mycelium, formation of rhizomorphs, then the development of basidiocarp, formation of basidia, karyogamy within the basidia and formation of diploid nucleus which is followed by meiosis and formation of four haploid basidiospores which on germination start the cycle again. With this we come to the end of today's lecture. We hope this lecture will help you in understanding the important features and life history of agaricus in a simplified manner. Thank you.